Hi friends and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Mark from Wild Dogs African Motorcycle Adventures. We absolutely love drones, uh, we love motorcycles, we love cameras. So that's the type of content um, you're going to get here. If you like that type of content, please feel free to subscribe, hit the, hit the notification bell, don't miss any of our videos and enjoy it guys. Okay folks, today we are going to talk about my workflow for how I create uh, a time lapse with Mini and Spark for that matter. So what I do first obviously is get Mini up in the air uh, to a spot where I want to take the time lapse, uh, let her hover there, uh, I set the camera exposure no, uh, manually, then I take three second interval photographs. Uh, then I bring Mini back down and um, then I am going to talk you through my workflow um, for which I use VSDC Video Editor and DaVinci Resolve and I'll explain why and how I do things as best as possible. So guys, please enjoy it and don't forget to give us a like if you like this type of content and we'll chat to you soon. Okay folks, I have now imported all my photos into a folder that I took from Mini and what I now do is I go to VSDC Free Video Editor. I open this up. Um, and what we're going to do here now, guys, uh, this is a free software available. I will try and find the link for you and leave it below in the description. Um, both the software, I, both the softwares I use are free, so it's not going to cost you guys anything. And this is what the software looks like. First of all, we're going to open a blank project. Okay, and we'll leave it as project one because what I do normally is I actually save it in the folder where I've put all the photographs as well. Now, because it's um, because it is <coughs> photographs, um, we can use a 4K resolution, and I set the frame rate to 24 frames per second because that's what we'll be working with. Then we hit the finish button. You'll get this nice blank screen um, and it's very simple from here. We're going to go add an object and we are going to run a sprite wizard. That'll open up this for you. Now, what we're going to do here is we're not going to use any transitions, etc, etc. So that's for transitions, but we are going to add all the photos that we took with Mini. Um, we're going to go get them here. Um, let me find where I put them and we'll use um, no. So um, that's going to Mini, and there's Mini's time lapse, and we'll select all the photographs. And um, once we've selected them all, we just hit the open button. This will now take all these photographs and add them into our sprite files. Uh, let's fast forward through this quickly. Right, folks, once that is done, you will notice that each photograph is five seconds long. I think VSDC defaults, defaults to that. So we need to change this because we wanted it for at 24 frames per second. Now me being an accountant by trade, I have now already calculated that and we'll select the first one and then make sure we select all. And you will see here you've got duration. In the duration, we're gonna go change this to 41 once we've done that, you will see the green tick come here. Make comes here. Make sure you apply that, and you'll notice all of them change to 41. Then what we will do now is we'll hit the apply settings. Right, folks. Now once this is done, you would go then click on the sprite, and you will see at the bottom left the sprite is now opened over there. So we'll go click on that, and you will see these are all the photographs that are now in the sprite. Now we want to change the size so that we've got no um, no black bars on the sides, etc. So I hit the layer, and you will see it automatically selects all the images. Right, then what I do is I right-click on the layer, and I go and set the size. And because this is a photograph, and we are working with a 4K video now, we can just set this, we're going to we can set the size to original. You will now notice that. It is now extended over, but we will have 4K video in this section of it, so we can move this around to adjust it as we want, but I'm going to leave it in the center there for argument's sake. But if you did want to drag it around, you would just uh, 
click and hold and drag it to the position you would like. So if you wanted more of the bottom in the frame, you'd click it up. Um, so that is the crux of the matter. Um, and then, once that is done, very simple, we go to the top of the page and export the project. <clears throat> right, once it comes in here, uh, give it a bit of time because my machine is slow, you will see an input file down here and an output file down here. Um, what I do is you'll see I've set mine to the web and for YouTube because I find that that's the best settings. Um, and we're going to use 4K Ultra HD, which you can choose from. You can use 2K, you can use 1080, 1080, etc. But for this, we're going to use 4K because we're going to edit it this further in DaVinci Resolve after once and after this is done. So what I do now is with this, I go and edit the profile. that came up but anyway we go and edit the profile and you will see it's at 90 percent which i leave which is great so you can leave everything as is um i've got it under high quality h264 all i do is this video doesn't have audio so i take that audio off and i apply the profile My next step is to save the project where I want it, so I just go change the name, and like I said, I save it in the folder where I've created the time lapse. I already, I already have a folder for this, but just for argument's sake, I'm going to call this project test for you guys. And we're going to save it, and then you'll see it comes up here where it's going to save your file, and the next step is very simple. We go and export the project. And we wait for it, guys, um, and that is it. Let's fast forward through this. All right, folks, uh, I, don't, I do not want to upload this to YouTube. It's, um, it asks that question because I've got the YouTube settings, so I'm just going to say no. Um, we now have our file that we need that we are going to import into DaVinci Resolve. Um, you may, you guys may ask why I do that. It is because I find I get smoother video by doing this first, first and then stabilizing the video in DaVinci Resolve. Um, for some reason, because I, you can import this directly into DaVinci Resolve, but I find I get better results doing it this way. This is just my workflow. Um, there are many ways to kill a cat guy, so um, I'll probably get lots of questions of why you do it this way. This is just my preferred way. Uh, then we can now close this because we are now done with VSDC and we'll move on to our next step. Um, I don't, not, don't need to save that. I've already got the file that I need. And that's it. Then we will head off to DaVinci Resolve for our next step. Okay, folks. Once you've opened DaVinci Resolve, which I've also left a link for in the, um, in the description for you, um, go to the Media tab and go and find the folder where you have now saved this um, file that we've just created in VSDC, which I call Project Test. So here it is. I am then going to import this, just by dragging it down into our pool, uh, and I'll generate the optimized media so that, um, so that we can, so the workflow is a little bit quicker. And we'll fast forward through this quickly for you. Okay, folks, then I will head off to my edit tab, open up my media pool, and there will be my project test, which I will now just drag down into the timeline and open up the inspector tab. Uh, what I generally do is, depending on the, on the length of the timeline, um, I also hit the control R button and it doesn't look like it's a very, very long, um, very long clip that I've taken here. So I'm just going to adjust the speed to 75%. Okay. Then what I do is the key, the key factor here is the stabilization. Uh, I'll close all this. I'm not going to transform anything. Okay. Because the clip will now be very, very jittery. So I'm going to go into stabilization. And because my camera was standing still, uh, uh, the mode I normally use is I always use perspective mode. Uh, I leave the settings, the cropping ratio and the smoothing ratio as is. 
um, should it need adjusting, I adjust it, but I find the default settings that DaVinci Resolve has is pretty good for this. And then because my um, mini was static, I'm going to put on the camera lock, and then I'm going to hit the stabilize button. And this could take a while, guys, so we are going to fast forward through this again for you. Right guys, the stabilization is now done and as you will see it zoomed in slightly because the camera was fairly stable in the, in the, and it wasn't too much of a windy day. So uh, if, if I can give you any advice, try and do this on uh, with as minimal wind as possible because the results are always much better if you do. Um, now I am just going to right click on my project and I'm going to render the cache color output so that I can just play through the video quickly and get an idea of what it looks like. And if I'm happy with it, then I will export it. Uh, I'll also fast forward to do this because rendering the clips does also take a while. Okay, folks, the line has now turned blue. So I can just have a quick playthrough here and see if it looks, and it looks pretty stable. Uh, the resolution is not great because I've rendered, um, because I've generated the uh, optimized media at a very low resolution so that we can work through the process quicker. So it's not a great um, resolution here in the editing screen, but now I will head off to the deliver tab and I will name my project, let's just call it a test project. Um, I'm not, I'm going to click on the audio tab, I'm, this doesn't have any audio, this is, so I'll just make sure there's no audio to be exported. Um, I'm going to always export it in MP4 and I'm going to leave the resolution at, um, at the timeline that I created which is which is just 1080 just for, for speed purposes. This you can change to 4K etc. Um, and I'm just going to restrict the bitrate to 25 and then I will add this to the render queue and we will start off the render process. You'll see once I start the render process, the, the media that comes up is a lot sharper, obviously, because now it's not using the, the generated optimized media. And that is my workflow, guys. Um, I will show you some of the results that we get, and hopefully you enjoy it. Um, and like I said, if you like this type of content, give us a like, subscribe, and we'll chat to you soon. Have a wonderful Christmas and may it be very blessed. Bye.